In this video, we're going to look at monopolist firms with many buyers and one seller. Like last time with perfectly competitive firms, monopolists have a marginal cost curve and an average total cost curve. They also have an average variable cost curve, but we're going to hide it in this video for simplicity. Similar to perfectly competitive firms, monopolists also face a marginal private benefit curve and a marginal revenue curve. For the perfectly competitive firm, the marginal private benefit curve and the marginal revenue curve were the same, and they also equaled the price. For the monopolist, though, the marginal private benefit curve and the marginal revenue curve are downward sloping. And remember, the marginal private benefit curve is just another name for the demand curve. To get a sense of where the marginal revenue curve is coming from, let's zoom in on two points on the marginal private benefit curve. Remember, the marginal revenue curve is the revenue associated with increasing the quantity by some given amount. The equation for marginal revenue is just the change in revenue over the change in quantity. Here we're going from a quantity of 20 to a quantity of 30, and you can see the price is going down due to the law of demand. It's going down from 90 to 85, respectively. So we see the price go down, but the quantity go up. So these two factors are moving in opposite directions. In contrast to perfectly competitive firms, where they had very little effect on the market, monopolists are the only seller in the market, and so do control the price. Using this equation gives us the value for the marginal revenue curve, and you can sort of see where it's coming from. With these tools in hand, let's go back and think about the monopolist problem, how a monopolist would set price and quantity. To do this, remember the solution to every firm's optimization problem is to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. This gives us quantity. Using quantity with the demand curve allows us to find price. And similarly with the average total cost curve allows us to find the average total cost. Using price, average total cost, and quantity allows us to find the firm's profits. And here we can verify that marginal cost equally marginal revenue actually solves the firm's profit maximization problem. If we increase the quantity to 60, their profit goes down. And if we lower the quantity to 40, their profit also goes down. And this is really coming from the fact that as we increase quantity, price also goes down from the law of demand. And if we decrease quantity, price is going up by the law of demand, but not fast enough to compensate for the lower quantity. When preferences in the market change, the solution to the firm's optimization problem also changes. When the demand curve shifts in, the firm's quantity also shifts in, and as you would expect, the profit also goes down. And the gray triangle in this model is deadweight loss, which is associated with the quantity that's not provided in the market where marginal private benefit exceeds marginal cost. This model also allows us to look at the effect of taxes on the monopolist's solution and government revenue, profit, and deadweight loss. So if we impose a tax, instead of using a tax wedge, we're just going to shift the cost curve for the firm. So we shift the marginal cost and the average total cost up by the amount of the tax. Remember, marginal cost captures the costs associated with adding one more unit. So when we include a tax, the costs are going up by the amount exactly equal to the tax. And the same is true for average total cost. We're saying average total cost is the cost associated with the total number of units sold divided by the total number of units. So because we're applying a tax to every individual unit, we're just increasing the average by the amount of the tax. As the tax goes up, quantity goes down and deadweight loss goes up. This is one kind of tax, but we also have another type of tax at our disposal called a lump sum tax. A lump sum tax is simply taxing the firm independently of how much they're producing. We typically don't look at these types of taxes in competitive markets. 
But when we look at monopolies, lump sum taxes can be useful, and we're going to demonstrate why. So first, introducing a lump sum tax because the value of the tax doesn't depend on how much is being produced. We're simply taxing the firm for existing. It doesn't affect the marginal cost curve. We're essentially just increasing the fixed cost for the firm. So this shifts only the average total cost. And what this does is essentially transfer some of the firm's profits to the government. What you can see here with the tax and the lump sum tax, neither policy is effective at increasing the quantity to the socially efficient quantity, where the marginal cost curve and the marginal private benefit curve intersect. But what if we included a subsidy? We've looked at subsidies in the past and we've said, subsidies tend to increase the quantity exchanged in the market. Here, if we impose a subsidy on the monopolist, their marginal cost curve shifts out and their intersection point with the marginal revenue curve also shifts out. And if we do it appropriately, we can find a tax where quantity is equal to the socially efficient quantity, giving us zero deadweight loss. But one of the problems here is that we're transferring wealth from the government to the firm. We've increased the firm's profits and we've imposed a cost on the government where the yellow area represents a negative government revenue. So what if we include both a tax and a lump sum tax? Here, we've increased the quantity to something close to the socially efficient quantity, and we've effectively eliminated deadweight loss. We've also generated positive revenue for the firm by simultaneously subsidizing quantity exchanged by including a subsidy and a lump sum tax. We've changed the firm's marginal incentives by rewarding the firm for selling, but we've also taken away some of their profits using a lump sum tax. In the next video, we're going to look at monopolistically competitive firms, firms that have a similar model to monopolies, but are competitive in a similar way to perfectly competitive firms. The model will look very similar to monopolists, but we're also going to have an element of dynamics where firms enter and exit based on their profits.